So last time I showed you how to um, upload a, a, a file, a, 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 a actual robot into your controller. Um, this time I want to talk to you about I want to talk to you about frames and other things of that nature. Uh, again, I told you about this green field here. It's called DCS, Dual Check Safety. This is set up by you um, when you get a robot. In this case, this robot already has some stuff that's set up. Green means the robot can work within that area. Red means it can't go in that area. So because I have a, a, a teach cart with a with a camera, um, that's what this is showing. But to give us some more flexibility so we're not running into DCS errors all the time, I'm going to show you how you can turn off the DCS. Again, this is just for simulation, but at least you're aware of where it goes. If you go into Menu and you go to Next, and then you go into System, there's DCS, Dual Check Safety. And if everything is okay, it's going to show up here safe and unsafe. So right now, just for kicks, if I jog the robot in an X-positive direction all the way over, it's going to give me an error and everything is going to, going to say stop. It's in, the it's in the danger zone, unsafe. So if I hit shift reset and then hit minus, I got to, oh. this is shift reset. And then I hit min minus away and then everything's hunky dory. Okay, so I don't run into this. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the Cartesian position check. So notice this is the work zone camera. I'm going to go into detail. I'm going to hit disable. I'm going to hit disable. Um, and then I'm going to go back out, to back out, and do the same thing with the camera. Detail choice, and I will uh, do disable. Now, in order to you're saying I need to apply that here, and I can do the same thing with my speed check. Cartesian space, so I can go into here and disable. And this is just for the this this robot environment. And if I can go back out to my menu, it's gonna say what's been changed. And if I want to apply those, I have to hit apply. Now there is a code. I won't say it out loud, but if you look closely. the code has been on the screen. Um, that's the default code, at least for this robot. So now it's saying pending. I would want to cycle power. And some robots can go to function next. And there's a uh, cycle power right here. Not in this robot. So I have to go up to robots in the, in the drop down and restart controller. Let's do a cold start. And it will restart that for me. And when it shows up again, there will be no um, green shells and force field. And the green tooling that was there is gone because that was based on the Cortesian system. So just go, we'll go from there. All right. So last time I had you add a gripper. We'll get back to that another time. But let's do add tooling. Um, because I want to talk to you about tool frames. If you go into your robot work cell, under under, and, and if you go to the robot itself and hit the plus sign, you'll see tooling. Remember, if we hit our control, if we hold down shift and cord, this will tell us our active tool frame, jog frame, and user frame. Ignore jog frame. I never use it, but ignore it. But right now we're in tool frame one and user frame zero. Okay. That is our default. That's the default um, setup. User frame zero is just our 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 world jogging, um, but everything is. But let's we're going to change that in a second. But user frame zero is world um, tool frame. You can have up to ten new tool frames. I'm going to uh, we're going to teach one in a second with a pointer. But this is where you change all that and see what's your active tool frame. Right now we're in the jog joint mode, but these are our active frames. Frames are a way for us to remember where things are uh, or how to, to have the robot calculate positions. So right now, if it, it, remember, if I'm in world, I'm going to cord over to world. The origin is all based upon that center. Everything is going to be calculated off of where that tool point is based upon the, the middle of the robot. So kind of in the center of that, that axis two, uh, that axis two. Okay. 
So when I move things around and hit position and go to world, these calculations are calculations from the tool center point in relation to that world. So we need to make sure the tool center point is absolutely correct. The tool center point is where the robot does work. So if I have a MIG welder, the little wire that comes out, that's where we would want our tool center point to be. Say, But if I have a spot welder that's kind of got a gooseneck, my tool center point should be here because that's where I do the work. Say I have a spray gun. So the paint comes out of this nozzle, but the work may be where the nozzle has the best spread of paint. So just keep all that in mind. So we're going to set that up by just setting a pointer on the U. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to U-Tool 2 and I'm going to hit Edit Properties. So Edit Properties. And notice now this is the location of the tool. We want it attached 0, 0, 0, 0. I'm going to go to open the CAD file. And these are default CAD files. And under EAOTs, there's a pointer. I'm going to highlight that. It's going to be a little big for our sake. So I'm going to just change this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to kind of cut in half. And then I'm going to hit apply. And you'll see now that there's a pointer attached to the robot. Okay? A nice lobes. A nice little pointer attached to the robot. Okay, so but if I just if I look at my U tool because the U tool is synonymous with uh, user frame. Okay, uh, 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 as a tool frame, and I'm just going to get that's better. Uh, so if I say tool center point, think of the tool frame because what I'm doing is calculating a zero point on that tool for calculation's sake. And so if I click on U tool right now. It's saying, I'm going to edit U-Tool. It's saying that the U-Tool is in the center of the faceplate of the robot, which is default. Okay? We all know that that's not the case. In RoboGuide, what I can do is move this triad. And I will zoom in. And I can get really, really precise with that. That looks pretty doggone good right there. And say that's now my, and I can say use current triad location and see, and now I can say make that my U tool point. So that now when I'm doing calculations of the world, it's going to move in relation and do rotations that's going to go in relation to that tool center point. And so now I might just make this zero though, just because, because all we do is come out. So I'm going to hit apply, and now that's my U tool. So now that if I jog in a world, it's going to be in relation to that. Okay? If I wanted to edit tool frame and say this is a gooseneck, and say that it was over here, and hit apply, now you can see everything is in relation to things over there. So this is why we need to accurately like point, uh, accurately calibrate and, and, and set up our, our U-tool. Because if we don't, then we're not, the robot is not moving correctly in space. And let me get on that. That is one nice thing about setting this up in there. Yeah, that's better. Use current triad location. And I'm gonna just put that as zero. And I'll make that zero too because that makes it better. Okay, so now we have a U tool. So now, if I wanted to, I could jog in that that tool. So if I hit Shift Chord, I gotta make sure U two tool is active, and it is. Um, and once I do that, I can then hit Chord to go over to Tool. But first, because I'm in a straight, I got to go over to a joint and rotate my, my joint five down. Whoops. Rotate my joint five down in a downward, about 15 degrees. If you see singularity, that's what you have to do. Okay. So there I go. 
So now that I got a calibrated tool frame, why don't I add, add a partner fixture? I'm hit okay on that. And so now I'm good. So why don't I add a fixture? And what we're gonna do next is create a user frame. Now in the real world, I'm gonna build this up just so you know, in the real world, is my camera glitching on me? Let me just see, in the real world, Sorry, my camera's glitching on me, so I'm not. I don't know if I'm recording. Um, the so in the real world, we would go to menu, setup, and frames, and this is where we can. And this is the 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 uh, U tool we just set up, okay. And I can click on detail, and I can do one of three different methods, like direct entry, four point, three points, the most common, because that is like going take taking a known reference point out in the real real world bringing your robot down on it on one angle, bringing it down at another angle, and bringing it down at another angle, basically making a, a three a three corner setup. And that will, uh, that will teach that, that, that tool center point. Um, we did the cheat way um, because that allows us to move faster in the simulation. Just be aware of that in the real world. Direct entry is good because if you have just a pointer, you can just measure the pointer and add in the point, uh, the length. Um, but if I have a, I can also create a frame in space. So remember, right now everything is being calculated from the, the origin of the robot, for lack of a better word, to the tool center point. That's great. So if I'm doing work out here in the in the real world, everything's from that that origin here. However, say I'm doing work on a part out here, okay? And and some someone gets the bright idea that I want to move it over here because that's going to create cycle time. Because all my calculations are based from here, the origin, I have to reteach all those points over here. However, say we know where this is at all times and we calculate a, a, a frame, a plane, in which is our main reference. We then teach a job in that plane so that, that now everything in that job is related to this, this, this origin here. If we change this fixture in any way, all we have to do is reteach these three points, and now we can still do the job. Instead of maybe reteaching uh, 15 points or 180, we only have to reteach three. So let me show you. I'm gonna by, I'm gonna show you this by adding a, adding a part or, or a fixture. But first, let me go up to robot. I know, let's go up to cell and add. Um, we can just add a fixture. I'm gonna call it a box. Okay. And it's going to create some box way up here in space. And that's going to be Jimungus. So I'm going to go in and just maybe change this to like, I don't know, 100, 100, and maybe 50. Okay. Hit apply. And now that's a little bit smaller. I can then move this down and move this to where I need it to be. Um, And that's a little bit more realistic, maybe, when in reference to the robot size. But what I'm going to do too is do a do a roll on 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 the y-axis, and let me do negative 45. Not plus. So now it's tilted towards me. Okay. And so say that's where I want to do my work. Say I'm doing a weld weld machine, and that's where I'm doing my work. Okay. What I can do is once I get this all set up, I can move the robot directly by just grabbing the triad and moving it to where I want it to be. That's a little bit easier for jogging if you want to just record points. Get used to jogging, but there, but what I'm gonna just go to this corner at first because what because if I go into setup frames um, I'm gonna back out of the tool frame go to other and there's user frame okay let me clear off a couple of these that way it gives us some stuff to work for yeah yes and I'm gonna just go to user frame tool and hit enter okay if I click on enter I can add a comment. If I scroll down to options keyboard and hit F5, key, I can use the keyboard here to type in something. So box one. No spaces, just go box one. Okay, enter, and now there's my comment. Always label these things. And, and what we want to do is first record an origin point. 
So if I scroll down and highlight that, you see some options come up. And at this point, what I can do is just hit Shift, Record, and I've just recorded this position. Now, what I, what I can do is move the robot in an X positive direction. Now, this is a re re you know, re reference to um, we're in the joint mode. Um, I can cord over to tool or world. I'm going to go to tool just because. And I can move this in an X positive direction. And I can go right to this corner. So I move that to a, with something in an X positive direction, scroll down hit shift record, and now this point is recorded. If I wanted to, if I screwed it up and want to do it over again, let me do Z minus, because if I'm in tool frame and I hit Z minus, I'll always back away from whatever part I'm facing. And I can go shift, and I can scroll up to my origin point, hit move to, and it's going to move back to that position. So now I'm going to kind of go down here, and I'm going to, I'm going to manually move this. No, I want the, the triad. I can move that right to, the, to that other position there. And you can see I'm touching that. And now all I got to do is hit record. Shift, uh, shift record. And now you can see numbers populate. And if I hit shift, cord, and change user frame, the user frame, the active user frame to two, because that's the one I just recorded, and hit cord to change my jogging feature to user i want you to notice what is it doing in ref what look at the position position values i'm at right now i'm gonna go back to work i'm gonna go back to user here look at my position values and if i if i'm jogging before if it's in world it's all based on here to the middle of the robot okay so everything is based from here to the middle of the robot but in user, everything is based upon off of this one point and orientation based upon those two others I recorded. So I can record jobs in that frame. And if I wanted to change it to something else, I could without a problem. So now if I, if I want to jog and hit X positive, it's going to go right along that box there. If I, if I want to do Y positive, I'm a Y negative, it's going to go right along that box. If I hit Z plus, it's going to go into the box. Z minus go away from the box because of the right hand rule. If I recorded X plus that way and Y plus this way, then Z plus will be in the box. So when we start doing jobs, which I'll show you shortly again, because I, we should do them all in frames. Okay. So um, that is a little bit of, uh, of, of how to do user frames and new tool in, in RoboGuide. It's actually quite nice because you can draw things around. Just be aware, though. Like, I'll give you an example of this. If I go to World, and if I drag this point to this, like, maybe on the back side, look how it changed orientation. So you just got to be careful that sometimes it changes orientation out of blue, um, and you may not want that. So just keep that in mind if you're using RoboGuide. It's a little annoying in that regard. Um, so just and if you go some if you try to move the robot in a way and there's shortcuts to move it to facing and we'll get that we'll cover that in another lecture all right thank you for your time have a good day